We're currently in a fast-paced world where there are tons of AI chips in the market. We have Google with TPUs, we have Nvidia with GPUs, we have companies like Sambanova with CGRAs and Cerebrus with massive wafer scale, down to Tens Torrent with 10.6 cores, and then all the embedded markets with all the little analog and neuromorphic and all those different sorts of cores that you've seen on this channel before. What if I were to tell you that there is another way? In this video, we're going to speak about a new startup who says that they can go forward another 10 to 1000 X in efficiency for AI hardware. So what this company is doing is actually quite innovative. Um, it's not a, necessarily a brand new idea, but it's definitely a, being applied in a brand new context. Now, machine learning and AI currently, whether it's hardware or software, is pretty fast paced. We've got new models being developed all the time, new architectures for those models, how they're applied, how they're used and how they perform, how they're optimized. Everything is being moving at roughly a, a fairly fast pace. So as a result, we've needed a lot of configurable hardware in order to do that, or at least programmable hardware. The ability to use it in different ways in order to extract performance, regardless of whether it's doing this little niche or that little niche or this new optimization. Uh, the big changes are things like transformers. Uh, that's required as almost a new dedicated sort of hardware on top of that. But the whole point is, if you use a GPU, you can pretty much do anything. If you use one of these new dedicated AI ASICs, as long as you're using TensorFlow and PyTorch, it's usually pretty okay. What if some of those models were very well defined? The ability to look at a model and say, this isn't going to change for 10, 20, 30 years. It's highly optimized. We know the code paths. We know exactly how it's going to perform. What if we had silicon dedicated to that exact model? And this, this is what this startup is going to do. It's called Talas, which means uh, locksmith in Hindi. And it's a new startup with about $50 million in funding by Lubija Bajik. You may remember Lubija from being the founder of Tens Torrent. He left Tens Torrent about a year ago. Jim Keller now runs that company, and I do a bit of work with them. But his new startup based in Toronto, Canada, is called Talas. I keep wanting to call it Talas, but it's Talas. And their whole point is, what if you had dedicated AI chips per model? Now, this seems a bit far-fetched. I mean, designing a chip takes millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars, um, which means if you have one per model and the models are changing frequently, then that's going to be millions of for that chip, millions for that chip, millions for that chip. Now, there is one sort of solution here you could go down route. It's called the FPGA route. FPGA is fully configurable hardware. And in that instance, you get essentially a fully optimized version of your code path and you can change it with a different code bit stream in order to change those pathways for your optimized model. What we think Talas is proposing here is something that sits in between you know, a standard AI accelerator and that fully reconfigurable hardware, something called a structured ASIC or what Intel calls this eASIC business. What you have here is a reconfigurable hardware like an FPGA. But in the final few letter layers of metalization, you fix some of those pathways to be what's called hardened. That means that there's no overhead for reconfigurable logic. Uh, you get dedicated ASIC-like speeds, but the configurability of having, different, of having the same uh, chip being manufactured, but then being optimized in different ways. It's not something that we necessarily speak about a lot in the industry, just because we either have things like dedicate, uh, we have like CPU cores and GPUs, which are fully programmable uh, logic. And then you have FPGAs, which is reconfigurable hardware. This is essentially trying to meet in the middle with that, uh, the benefits of having an ASIC on top. What Talas and Lebesha are saying here is that they can extract a 10 to 1000x better performance, better, or better efficiency as well, um, and may bring the cost of the hardware down. What they say is the, what's going to be an issue moving forward with some of this machine learning stuff is the cost of the hardware. Not everybody can buy GPUs. Perhaps you don't want a GPU in your small embedded device. You needed a dedicated AI accelerator with dedicated AI pathways that's super efficient. 
maybe the device it's going in will never connect to the internet for 10, 20, 30 years. You know what code is going to be on there. And as a result, you can have dedicated hardware just for the model you're running on that piece of hardware. Now, we could go into a conversation here about the proliferation of AI models. Um, we ex I expect AI models to be almost as ubiquitous as electricity. It's going to be in the small chips, in your smart meters, in your cars, in your any, in any electronic device. It's going to be doing things like advanced power management. It may not be doing things like large language models, uh, though maybe you do have a small handheld device that doesn't connect to the internet that will have to interact uh, with voice or with language in some way, or you know, image generation. That's, like I say, AI and machine learning is still such a rapidly developing market. It depends what you're going to be using these devices for. I mean, right now I've got a camera in front of me. The camera doesn't connect to the internet, but it could use machine learning for power optimization or for uh, image correction, because goodness knows this image is probably terrible. But then behind it, I've got a ring light, and maybe the ring light needs machine learning again for adapting some of the LEDs. Perhaps the performance of the LEDs changes over time. And perhaps you can put that into a dedicated ASIC that's cheap to make, cheap to proliferate, ultra low power, and could potentially become ubiquitous. This is essentially what Talas are doing. They're calling it Talas Foundry. So it's a combination of hyper optimized models and then hyper optimized silicon producing this net benefit. And they think that's the future of where machine learning has to go, especially when we're talking about edge and edge inference. We're not necessarily talking about the big training right now. This is mainly an edge and edge inference. Um, so good luck to Labija and his team. They're expecting a chip tape out by the end of the year and proliferation into customers by next year um, as a generalized language model uh, chip. Now, I say generalized. It's going to be dedicated for a specific customer, right? I'm pretty sure. But they've got to show off a proof of concept and they've got to show that this technology works. We'll be staying tuned and we'll, be keep, we'll keep on top of what announcements they'll make in the future.